Okay, I'm here in the session with Titus, and we just uh, spent a lot of time outside making sure it was a positive association. Um, he's fine with me, uh, but Hunter, who is uh, our behaviorist in training, is filming this right now. And when Hunter moved around, he growled a little bit at Hunter. Now, a quick little note, in this video I'm going to kind of show you how to get your, uh, create a positive association with something your dog might disagree with. Um, so, uh, a quick note, if your dog is... Uh, reactive to anything, you want to increase the distance. When we met outside, we did it because there's a lot of distractions outside. Inside, everything's kind of amplified. There's only one escape route, and so that everything kind of makes the dogs feel a little bit un uncomfortable. Um, it, it, or if the dog's uh, anxious, little things make it feel uncomfortable. So we just got done doing what I call priming the clicker. And basically what uh, everybody calls priming the clicker. So you throw a treat on the ground, when the dog uh, licks it up, you click to make an association. So let's go ahead and let him have the treats that you have in your hand, just so he's not targeting. Then just open and let him lick it off your hand. And you're going to give him a little bit more lead, uh, free leash, not a ton. We don't want him to get to Hunter. So what I'm going to do now at this point is, uh, as a dog psychologist, one of the things I try to do when a dog's fearful of something is I try to expose them to it in the easiest version possible. In this case, all I want the dog to do is look at Hunter. And so I'm just watching him. I'm not going to tell him what to do. He's looking at me. And you can look at anywhere around the room, and I'm just watching and waiting. Now you see how the dog is breathing heavy. That can be a sign of stress. Hunter. Now, I'm going to assign Hunter's name, even though Hunter probably will never be here again. And let's let, not, not let him nope, get into nope. there. There you go. Uh, so the only reward he gets is for, uh, yeah, sorry about that, the bad direction on my part. Um, so the only time that he's going to get is for looking at Hunter. And that first time, that was accidental. He didn't even realize what he was doing. So he's looking at me. When he's trying to figure out what, what do I have to do to get another treat. And what he has to do is look at Hunter. But he doesn't know that. This is a form of what we call operant conditioning. So basically, operant conditioning is waiting for the dog to organically do something on its own, and within a very short period of time, I usually tell my clients three seconds, rewarding the dog. Now, we already primed the clicker, so every time he looks at Hunter, clicking the clicker means you just did exactly what I wanted. I'm going to get a treat or reward to you as soon as I possibly can. So if your dog is doing something like a look at Hunter, if I tried to say Hunter and give him a treat, he might look at Hunter and the fireplace and the shoes and the Xbox and a whole bunch of different things and not know exactly what it is. The clicker is very precise. So um, now one thing you never do is you never click, 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 click to get the dog's attention. It's just to indicate you just did what I wanted. So if I was cleaning for laying down, I would have clicked there and then give him a treat. Hunter. Now since Hunter's probably not going to be here again, it's really not that important we do Hunter's name. So um, I did it, uh, this is a demonstration video. So. Uh, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to assign kind of more of an, uh, a word that's going to be a little bit more descriptive of what we're looking to achieve here. And so I'm kind of looking at him, checking in with him, but I'm not staring eye contact with him. Friendly. So I'm going to use the word friendly. So that way, if you start staring at somebody, you say friendly, we're putting things in context. Most of us put things out of context. The dog is excited, and we say calm down as we're petting the dog. And the dog's like, well, the only time I hear calm down is when I'm going batshit crazy. So clearly, calm down means go get excited. So it's a very common mistake that people make inadvertently marking things the exact opposite. As we were coming in, the guardians kept on saying, it's okay, good boy, it's okay, good boy. Well, if you only hear that, if he only hears that when he's in an anxious state of mind, that can actually become a command word to re be reactive. So you saw that our Titus was looking at the ground, he's looking in that direction, but he didn't look at Hunter, so I didn't click. Now, if you're not sure, you can click, but you want to try to be as precise as you possibly can. Friendly. And what we should see as this video goes on is him looking at the camera and look, essentially looking at Hunter more and more frequently. I have the treats here, so it's hard for him not to kind of stare at them, and i got a bucket full of treats at my uh, my feet. So those are very uh, desirable things and that's okay to attract the dog's attention. Normally we don't want to have a lot of distractions because that can be confusing for the dog and slow down your process. Um, so I'm just again at this point I'm kind of filling a little bit of time while we're just waiting for him to look at you. Um, while we're doing this let's talk about some signs of stress. So since uh, uh, Titus is actually displaying one right now, you see that panting. Uh, he's got his mouth open. A lot of us interpret that as a smile. But usually when a dog has his mouth open like this, they're trying to cool themselves down and they open their mouth to let liquid evaporate off their tongue. So it actually, what we interpret as a smile often can mean stress. Friendly. So this is called free shaping. It is supremely easy. However, the dog cannot be reactive when you're doing it. So if he's barking or lunging or growling, the person is too close and you have to find a scenario where the dog doesn't feel threatened or like reacting. I achieve this by either increasing the distance, lowering the volume, or turning down the speed of whatever the thing is. 
friendly. And uh, so it's when you have guests come over, what I would recommend you guys do is kind of follow the pattern that we did outside. Leave a trail of treats, have the person sitting, friendly, getting faster. Um, and leave the trail of treats. And at first I have uh, like the treats about every six inches, then about every 10 inches, 12 inches, and then about 24 inches. Uh, you want to kind of get the dog's attention at first and so they're really going after treats. Then once they kind of understand the game, you start elongating them, otherwise you can give them a million treats. And then when they get close to your subject, the, the, your guest, you want to have, I had kind of like three little piles of treats. Then I had the guest, in this case it was me, and I had some treats in my hand. And what I did is I leaned off to the side to offer it to Titus. Front facing is confrontational. Did he look at you there? He's Almost. Friendly. There we go. So when you do this, make sure you're watching. So I can watch the camera and still see him out of my peripheral, but if you miss one, it's not the end of the world, but it'll slow down your progress. You really want every time to look at Hunter, great things happen or the guests. So if he meets the guest outside, there's a lot more escape routes, there's distractions, so he's not focused exclusively on guest. Friendly. Um, and uh, number one. Number two, uh, uh, it just helps the dogs feel, uh, well, the distractions help, and also the multiple escape routes help. Now you can set your dog up for success by exercising it before you have this sort of an encounter. Just make sure he has about 10 minutes to recover before you actually guest arrives. Friendly. Um, so what we're doing is just all you have to do is look at the person. They're not touching you. They're not talking to you. They're not engaging with you. They're holding still because trigger can be uh, movement can be a trigger. Um, and we're just creating a positive association just with looking. If every time you look at something, somebody gives a hundred dollar bill and shoves it in your pocket, after a while you start looking more and more. And after a while, like that's my favorite thing ever, even though I've just don't even know what it is. I'm just looking at it. So it's easier for the dog to just process because it's just one set. Whoops, friendly. I'm almost out of, out of stuff, but luckily I have a bucket right there. So some of the dog body language, you notice now he's not breathing as heavy. He just opened his mouth there and you see his, his, his uh, he's shimmying a little bit. Um, so signs of uh, stress and anxiety in dogs, licking the lips, per frequently just licking just a little tongue flicker right in front, yawning, um, what we call whale eye, which is they look almost sideways and you see a lot of white in their eye. Dilated pupils, um, ears uh, coming way far back, tail going straight up, hackles, the hair in, uh, on the spine, friendly. Um, uh, probably between the shoulder blades and between the hip blades, but also some, some dogs, his would probably be a little bit harder to see as a longer dog. Usually you see right there. Right there, yeah. yeah. So I call it, some people call it like a mohawk or something like that, but that's a sign of arousal. Now, during all these things, none of these things are, are like aggression. These are just signs of uh, stress and anxiety in the dog. And so if, uh, one of the things that I, people do often is they correct and punish the dog for growling or lunging. Now, if your dog growls and lunch, you put it in a situation it wasn't ready for. Friendly, that's a big chunk there. Um, and so the dog is what we call above threshold. When they're above threshold, essentially they're hysterical. They're not going to hear anything. They're not going to listen to anything. Now, one thing that was going on is we had some construction, or not construction, we had some lawn maintenance people outside. I asked them before we brought him out how long they were going to be. We let them clear the area before we brought him out because those sort of things can trigger a response from them. There's people yelling. There's construction going on. There's dogs barking. And, and as in the middle of doing this, some woman came around our apartment complex, came around the corner, and I gave her a very firm, friendly, a very firm stop. And I said, don't come here. And I afterwards, I went to go find her to apologize. But I wanted to be very strict because I don't want uh, anything bad to happen. <coughs> And so if you have a choice of being polite versus making sure your dog doesn't bite someone, I would rather have you err on the side of making sure your dog doesn't bite someone. So one of the exercises I recommend a lot of people do if they have an aggressive dog is when your dog, friendly, is nice and relaxed and balanced and feels good, is look at his ears, look at the position of his head, look at his overall body language. Uh, is it stiff or is it hunched over, crouching, uh, tense? And look at the tail. Not only where is it, but where is it moving? Friendly. And so once you can recognize and read your dog's positive body language, then you can start looking for deviations from that in situations. Dogs don't react out of nowhere. It can be very quick, but they do give warning signs. Most of us are just completely ignorant focus of what those warning signs are. So educating ourselves, and just like we have for our uh, life partner, if one of us is at a party and uh, I can tell that my partner's feeling uncomfortable, I'm gonna get my partner out of there so my partner doesn't have to react. So the more that we, Friendly. The more that we do this with the dog, the more the dog sees the human that has the situation in control. I don't have to bark and react to him. And what it is, a lot of dogs are fearful. And uh, what happens is people reach to pet the dog and the dog backs up or turns his head aside or licks its lips, which are three ways of saying, I'm uncomfortable. Friendly. 
um, with you. I don't want you to touch me. And what do we do? We pet the dog anyway because we think, well, what I'm doing is a positive thing. I'm giving the dog love and affection. Why shouldn't I do it? Friendly. Well, if I think someone's creepy, the more they touch me without getting permission from me, the more creepy I think I'm going to think they are. And so for dogs, they back up and they turn their head away or they lick their lips as a way of saying no, but we don't know what to look for. Friendly. So after enough times, and the dog's in a bad mood and somebody reaches for them and they snap at the person or they bark and they lunge and the person, and they back away. Well, the dog's like, Eureka, all I have to do is act aggressive and that makes people move away. So you have a lot of dogs that aren't actually aggressive but are pantomiming or acting aggressive because that is a good way to get the people friendly to move away. So if you do ever re see your dog uh, turn its head to the side or back up or cower, whatever the situation is and somebody's reaching and trying to engage with the dog, stop them. Friendly. The more that you do that, the more the dog feels, well, I don't have to lunge anymore. All I got to do is turn my head and it moves people away. And so the more that your dog does this, then you're rewarding a desired behavior. Focus, uh, or excuse me, friendly, a uh, different exercise that I do. Um, but that'll help your dog feel more comfortable and confident in your leadership. And if I'm confident in your leadership, then I don't have to feel that I gotta sweat everything. Person's coming nearby, but if it was a problem, my humans would have the situation under control. Friendly. Well, uh, this is Titus, and these are, uh, so basically, if, well, before I sum, sum it up, so I uh, just give a little clicker like this, they're pretty cheap. Friendly. Uh, prime the clicker about six times, about drop 10 treats on the floor, click every time your dog clicks it up when it's nice calm to create that association. And then just have a clicker. So when you're on a walk and your dog looks at another dog but doesn't react, click, give it a treat. So I'm saying friendly for people. I might have a different command word that I use for dogs. So I might call it pals or amigos or whatever you want to say. Just I like using fun command words. Friendly. Friendly isn't necessarily fun, but that's okay for this situation. You don't want to make it too friendly so somebody doesn't come up to them. But at the same time, we want to break the mood by, and the tension by having some positivity. There we go. Look who's figured it out. Friendly. Yes. And don't say good friendly or oh, what a smart dog, Titus friendly. Just the word friendly. And be careful you don't say friendly, friendly, friendly. Just say it however you want to say it. Say it consistently the same each time. All right. So next time we get one, we're going to wrap up this video. So um, uh, to summarize, Exercise your dog beforehand. Uh, do a, the greeting like we did outside. Friendly. And then have your guests come in. Have them sit far enough away where he's not lunging at them. And every time he looks, somebody, one of you two, clicks, gives him the treat, and said the word friendly. Well, this is Titus, and these are some tips and tricks. And I use a clicker to create a positive association and the friendly command.